So now that we are done sculpting our caricature, we need to get it ready for 3D printing. There are several things that we need to do in order to get a proper and working 3D print. We have to combine all of our geometry together as 3D printing services only accept one solid object. We need to make our model hollow to save on cost, especially if we're planning to have a 3D print of 4 inches or more. We will also have to go through the process of decimating our mesh to save on polygons. And also we are going to unwrap our character to transfer the paint on the 3D print. We are going to do all these in this section of this course. So starting out with merging all the geometry together. Just scroll down, go to the merge area here. You're going to see merge visible button. Just make sure that you have all of the eye icon turned on there and then click on Merge Visible to combine all the geometry. So just wait for a bit. Okay, so once it's done merging, you should find your merge, merge mesh somewhere here. So it's going to be called minus merge underscore touch up. So you should start with the word merge there, all right? And there's underscore and the previous name of your subtool. Click on that. And you're going to be able to tell that is the merge subtool because if you try to scroll down, you're not going to be able to because you're only left with one subtool. Now, we're going to have to create a hole underneath to make this hollow. Okay, So remember, that's going to allow us to save on pricing on the cost of printing this out. Press X on your keyboard. And we're going to have to mask this out. Gonna use my mask pen. So just creating an oval shape here. So we're gonna make this into a separate poly group. Shift F on the keyboard, Control W to create a new poly group. And you can see that the color has changed. Control shift click on that blue mesh on that new colored mesh. And control shift click again on that same mesh to hide it. Now we're gonna have to delete that hidden mesh. Just scroll down, go to geometry, and you're gonna go to modify topology and click on delete hidden to delete that mesh. And it's going to tell us that we have some subdivision level on there and we need to delete the lower subdivision level. And it's fine. Just scroll up and click on delete lower for your subdivs. And then just scroll back down and click on delete hidden again. All right. So that mesh has been deleted permanently. And right now we don't see the inner surface, the mesh from the inside. So if you want to see the mesh from the inside, you can just go to display properties here and turn on double sided the double button here. So now we can see our mesh in there. Shift F to turn off polyframe. Okay, so now we're going to have to decimate this to reduce our poly count. If I go to subtool, hover my mouse over my subtool, it looks like I have 5,977,857 polygons. So that's too much polygons there. A lot of the 3D printing services out there requires you to have 1 million polygons or less. Anything more than 1 million polygons, it will get rejected and you won't be able to 3D print it. So how do you reduce the poly count of this? We're going to use the decimation master. Just go to Z plugin. You're going to see Decimation Master here. And make sure that you click on Use and Keep Poly Paint because we're going to need our poly paint to create a full color 3D print. And you're going to see Pre Process Current, Pre Process All. Pre Processing will compute our decimation and it will create progress files for us. Pre Process Current means it will pre process the current subtool that is selected there. Pre-process all means that it will pre-process all multiple subtools. If you have multiple subtools here, it will pre-process all of them all at once. Let's just click on pre-process current. Now this is going to take some time, guys. So if you want to go out there and buy a little something to eat, get your grub on, 
go to Starbucks nearby if it's early in the morning, get some coffee. Or if you just want to travel to your refrigerator, get a nice juicy apple, feel free to do that, guys, because this is going to take some time. It might take about 10 minutes or longer. Hey, guys, so I just cut out the part where it was computing, so you don't need to see all that. Fast forward to this. Okay, so calculating is done. Now we're going to have to make our final decimation. Go to Z plugin and you're going to see that there's decimation decimate current decimate all now we before we click on decimate uh, before we make a final decimation we're going to have to mess around with the percentage here so i'm just going to set it to three percent so having a three percent of decimation it says that it will give me 358,000, about 358,000 polygons. Now, I could definitely use a little bit more. So I, let me put, let me go back to that. I could put 3.5%. Okay, so when I set it to 3.5, it says I'm going to get 400, around 418,000 polygons. So that's what I'm going to need. And uh, the reason why I'm setting it around that number is because when I add thickness to the mesh here, you see how it's paper thin down there. So once I add thickness here, it will basically double that number. All right. So and shapeways actually only accept up to one million polygons. So shapeways is what I'm going to be using to have this 3D printed. So I, I like to set it around 418. So after the thickness has been added on there, this will go up to around 800,000 polygons or 900,000 polygons. You know what? Just to be on the safe side, I'll just set it to 3% decimation. So now it's 358,000 polygons there. And I'm just going to click on decimate current. So to make a final decimation. All right. And if I hover my mouse over here, so it says right there that I now have 355,868 polygons there. And if you see, it looks like the plastic toy material that I have applied on the eyeballs previously have been deleted. It has been eliminated there. And that's fine because the, the material, after we upload this in... In the 3D printing service, we get to choose the type of material that we want. We could use metal. We could use silver if you have the money to pay for that. We could use plastic or uh, you could use sandstone. I'm actually going to use sandstone for this because I want a full color 3D print. And I want to add a, a fake highlight here, though. So I still want it to look like it has a little gloss, even though it's 3D printed on a sandstone. So I'm just going to go to my damp standard brush, making sure I have Z-Sub turned off, RGB turned on, so I'm going to be able to color it. And bring down my RGB intensity. Just going to add a little highlight painting there. Bring down the RGB a little bit more. Okay. Okay, good. So in the next lecture, you're going to see me. I'm going to be adding some thickness on the mesh here. Okay, so that is going to be accepted by the 3D printing services. All right. And I'm also going to be rescaling this so that I'm going to have a real world size and the type of height that I want and width that I want. I'm going to be adjusting all that in the next lecture. See you there.